All right, welcome to my computer. The background that you're seeing right now is from the Netflix Korean drama called Crash Landing on You. Highly, highly recommend it. If you're into romance, if you're into comedy, if you're into action, this show has it all. I could talk literally forever about this show, but let's get into the video. Let's get into this tutorial. Uh, let's double click DaVinci Resolve, open this bad boy up. Okay, so once it's opened up, you will see the project manager. All of these thumbnails are my previous projects. When you download and install DaVinci Resolve for the very first time, you will not have these thumbnails. Hopefully, you won't have these thumbnails because these are my projects. You should only have untitled projects, so since we're starting from the very beginning, let us just open that up. And once it opens up, you will see a workspace. So you will know what workspace you're working in if you look down here and see which one is highlighted. So we have Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight, and Deliver. Right now, our Cut tab is highlighted, so we know we're in the Cut page, but let's go in order. So they set it up so that way you could set up your footage in order and then just work down the line. So let's go to our Media page. So this Media page is where you build your media pool for your project. So up here in the top left, we have our directory. So you have a list of hard drives or folders. You can click, you can open up whatever you want, and then literally just drag anything into your media pool. You could drag as many clips as you want or as many as you need for your project. Now, if you want to cut segments of this footage of our media, we could go to the cut page and up here we see our media pool and then we see a timeline. So we can double click on one of our media. We can scrub through the footage over here. Then we can add an in point, scrub through some more, and then add an out point, and then drag that into the timeline. So it shows up here. Then you can click on another piece of footage and do the exact same thing. In point, out point, and so on and so forth. Now, to be honest with you, I never touched these first two pages. I never touched media. I never touched cut. Because everything that you just saw and I just did, you could do in the edit page. So now this is what the edit page looks like. So you could see we have our two clips that we previously cut in our timeline. So this section right here is our timeline. This left side of the screen is our media gallery. So this is where we can drag and drop footage or import footage for our project. You could do that two ways. You could right click, you can click import media. You could search for your media and then just click open and it'll pop in here. Or you can open up you know, any folders and then find your media, find your footage and then drag and drop into your media gallery. And it replaces the need to do that in the media page. For the cutting, you can actually cut on the timeline. So you can, let's do this. Let's double click on some media. Uh, you could see how we had our in and out points from before. So let's just reset all that, right? Make it like it's fresh. And you could do the same thing right here. So instead of doing it in the cut page, you do it on the viewer. So I have my, my footage selected. I could hit I for in, scrub through, hit O for out, and then you have the option to drag both the, the footage, excuse me, the, the video and the audio together. So you see the blue and green, so that's video and audio. Or if you want, let's double click on this again, so it brings up our in and out points of that footage. You could do audio only or video only, and then you just drag it in the timeline. Let's delete those. Over here in this middle section separating the timeline and the viewer, we have a bunch of tools. Uh, so we have the select tool, uh, trim, the blade tool, and all this other good stuff. And then over here, so let's say, let's click on a piece of footage. Let's click on a clip and that activates the inspector. So you could turn it on and off the inspector up here in the top right. So if you turn off the inspector, it gives you a little bit more real estate for the viewer. You could turn it on. 
And within the inspector, you have control over a lot of parameters over a lot of things. So you could transform how zoomed in you want to be. You could transform the position, uh, rotation, all that good stuff. You could crop it if you want to. You can stabilize the footage if it's too shaky. So you have a lot of control and all of that is under the inspector tab. Now, let's say you wanted to adjust some audio settings. Let's just click on a green clip. That's our audio. And in the inspector, you see a whole bunch of things to change for audio. So volume, pan, pitch, you even have an equalizer you could do right there. So it's nothing that you haven't seen before if you've used either Final Cut or Premiere Pro. Like it's, it's all here. And if you wanted any video transitions or audio transitions or filters, stuff like that, you could go up here to effects library and you have all this available. You have video transitions, audio transitions, titles, effects, and you have some audio effects as well. Things like dehummer, uh, multiband compressor, noise reduction, stuff like that. So it's all here, not too bad, right? Then we have the fusion tab, which opens up our fusion page and I like to think of it as the equivalent to Premiere Pro's After Effects. So if you want to do any 3D compositing, 3D special effects, uh, motion graphics, stuff like that, it's done here. I haven't dabbled too much into the Fusion page just because I really don't have a need for it in my day-to-day -day work, but it is super powerful and you can do some really cool stuff with it. I have a tutorial on my channel using the Fusion page I think it was for like the 3D screen capture effect and that's on my channel. So check that out if you want to learn how to do that. Up next, let's go to our color page. And here is where all the color grading happens. The color page by itself is, in my opinion, worth the price of DaVinci Resolve Studio. So this page alone, I think is worth the $300 price tag. I'm not going to go too deep into how to color grade with this. I will give you a quick tour of where everything's located and what they're for. If you do want to see how I color grade with this, I already have some tutorials up on my channel, so check those out. But for now, let's go through this page. In the top left, we have our viewer, so this is where we see everything happen. And next to that, to the right, we have our node tree. Here is where we can add nodes to build our grade. Now you can think of nodes as adjustment layers, much like they have in Premiere Pro or Final Cut, I'm sure, but it is a little bit more complicated than that. I'm not gonna go over it today, but just know that nodes allow you to target specific parts of the image to give it a specific look. And it's just, it's amazing stuff. So you could do some really, really cool things with nodes. To the right of the node tree, we have our effects library. So you can, drag an effect and place it on a node and you could adjust those settings in here and then you could switch back and forth between settings of that node or you could go back to the library and find a different effect going across the screen to the bottom left we have our we have well we see some color wheels we see lift gamma and gain so that's the equivalent to shadows midtones and highlights Offset will control all three together. So, you know what? Let's just delete this last node. So you see what I'm talking about. Uh, so lift will boost the shadows. Gamma will boost the midtones. And then gain will boost the highlights. Now within this section at the center top, we see three dots. So the first one being our color wheels, or our primaries color wheels. Then the second dot, we have our primaries color bars. And within the color bars, we can, you know what? That's not a good image. Here we go. Within the color bars, we see uh, lift, gamma, and gain. So just like the color wheels, except we can control the RGB or the red, green, and blue channels of the shadows, of the midtones, and of the highlights. So we have a lot of control and then this last dot is our log wheels. Log wheels are very similar to the primary color wheels, except that it's just more precise at targeting. And to demonstrate that, let me go all the way over here to the right and change our scopes. Let's go to waveform. Now, log wheels, 
when I adjust the shadows, keep your eye on the waveform here. Let me just expand this by clicking this thing here. So shadows should only control this bottom portion of the waveform. So if I crank this to the left or down, you see how it's pulling down the shadows versus if I were to go back to the primary color wheels and if I go to this wheel and pull this down, you see how it's pulling pretty much the whole waveform down. It's pulling down the entire waveform but if I go back to the log wheels and pull this down, it's only pulling down that bottom portion, right? The highlights aren't being touched. The midtones aren't being touched. Same thing if I do it for the highlights. So if I'm staying in log wheels, highlights, and I pull that up, you see how only this is moving up or it's just moving at all because I'm pulling this exposure wheel. Now, if I go back to primary color wheels and adjust the gain, Again, I'm moving this wheel. Keep your eye on this. It's moving everything. So primary color wheels, the adjustments are more global, whereas log wheels, it's just more targeted to that specific region. So let's just X this out. So that's this section over here. In the center, center bottom, we have a whole bunch of stuff. So we can use curves and under curves we have uh well our main curve we have hue versus hue hue versus saturation hue versus luminance all that good stuff uh very similar to what you should see in premiere pros hsl if we click to the tab next to that we have color warper with the color warper so you see this eyedropper that's on the uh on the viewer right now so if i select his green shirt it's going to select that if you check out the color warper you could see that I'm moving across that color wheel so that's cool that's a new addition to DaVinci Resolve 17 qualifier is something I use a lot qualifier let's say if you wanted to select only his skin you just make sure the eyedropper is selected you select on his skin and you can target only his skin to adjust only that so make sure I mean this is a bad image bad example um, but qualifier basically you're targeting certain colors in order to make adjustments to only that color and you could adjust how much of the color you want like what saturation level of the image you want to target same thing with luminance this one window uh, these are power windows and these are basically you can create masks to target certain parts of the image this right here is tracker you could use the tracker to have your mask track an object within your image it's as easy as so let's see let me just create a simple mask around his face and then i'll go back here and track it this is real time and you see how accurately it's following his face sometimes it does lose it uh you could always reattempt or just keyframe and do it that way next we have magic mask magic mask is a new update that came with davinci resolve 17 and let's say instead of masking with a power window you can use magic mask to recognize a person have it track that and it's super accurate this one is blurring or, or sharpening these first one two three four five six uh are going to be the ones that i use the most and in this bottom right corner, we have our scopes. You can change the scopes you want to view by clicking on this drop down. And if you don't want to see the scopes, but instead you want to see the keyframes, here is where you can start keyframing stuff. So let's say, let's click on our mask and we want to activate a keyframe. So let's click this keyframe for corrector one because our mask is on node one. Let's give this a bump. And then boom, you see keyframes appear right there. And then you can create your keyframes as you want. And then if I play this back, you'll see that my mask is moving corresponding to those keyframes. So that's pretty much it for the color page as far as where everything is and what things do. Um, color grading in itself is 
its own video in fact is its own study so that's always ongoing I'm not going to do it in this video instead let's move on to fairlight honestly fairlight is not a page that i use too often or ever so fairlight is for audio audio effects and audio adjustments so you could see over here we have all these audio effects that you could add to audio so remember in our edit page audio is green in our Fairlight page, it's the same thing and it segments them per clip. So you could adjust whatever you want. Um, can I move this over? Why can't I move this over? I just, I don't think I can move that over. See, this is how little I use this. Um, but there is an equalizer. Oh, there you go. You could double click and it pops up. So you could double click on an equalizer and adjust the channels of that audio um you know and stuff like that i'm not an audio guy in the least so i barely mess around with this so moving on our last page is deliver this is where we deliver our project um by that i mean export the final project into a video you have a bunch of presets that you could export to so youtube 1080 vimeo 1080 i always do custom and like when you scroll down you have that's where you could fine tune everything. So I usually go uh, MP4, oops, MP4, H.264. Uh, you could adjust the resolution to fit whatever your needs are. Uh, you could adjust the bit rate. So least to best, or you could plug in your own custom bit rate. Then we have advanced settings, just a little bit more customization. So once your settings are all set up, you can actually select the in and out points for your project. So I just zoomed in on the timeline. Uh, so right now this is selected for only the first clip. I want the entire video. So I'll select O for out point. And whatever is highlighted, that's what's going to export. Once that's ready, you hit add to render queue and then highlight that project, render all and it'll render out. And that is DaVinci Resolve start to finish. Um, if you have any questions, hit up the comment section below. Hopefully I could help you out. Color grading in itself, like I said, is its own beast. It's something that is ongoing. I'm still trying to learn everything. But as far as using DaVinci Resolve as an editor, the timeline, pretty much the same thing as anything else. Color grading, if you learn the no tree system basics, Oh my God, you will be a color grading beast. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.